so I so Harvey felt kind of like his job was done. And then what happened to Harvey? What was he doing now? Well, the job was never done. I, I mean, literally, when I met him in 2000, this is seven years before he died, and he's going, well, you're, you're a neurologist who does vision, Lepore. Uh, how about looking at his, at his occipital lobes? So he had me pitching that idea to the Armed Forces Institute of Pathology to say, you know, if we get you sections from the occipital, the visual part of the brain, and they wouldn't do it. They said, we do not take... Um, research projects where the, the, donate, the donor of the tissue states the objective. So, but even in 2000, the guy was still thinking, how can I get closer to an answer? How can I get closer to the answer? And the closest he probably got was in 99, the year before, that article I was telling you that was in The Lancet with Whittleson looking at the parietal lobe, even though that's not a microscopic study, that's just looking at the photographs. He was obsessed with it. But, what you're alluding to, though, Simon, is his profession, professional life didn't go well after 55. Um, he'd had, uh, the marriage went bad. Uh, he left Princeton. He did some pathology work at some, uh, uh, some of the facilities in New Jersey. But eventually, he headed out to the Midwest. Um, he practiced. I don't know how much pathology he practiced, but at one point he, he took up general medicine, which is amazing. This is a guy who, you know, he did his internship like we all do, but then went straight into pathology, and now he's hanging out a shingle to do general practice. He did that for a few years. Um, and lost his license. Yeah, pretty much. Well, yes. What they said to him was, at this point, the guy's, you know, well in his 70s maybe in his 80s, and they say, well, you can sit the exam in Kansas or someplace like that, uh, the, the recertification exam, and he came close, but he couldn't pass it. And, you know, he's a lovely guy, a Quaker guy um, who, um, you know, works in soup kitchens to help people less fortunate. I mean, just a lovely, lovely guy, not a worldly guy. Um, and he ends up working in a plastics extrusion Factory in I think in Wichita. Lawrence, Kansas. Lawrence, Kansas. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah. Sorry, in Kansas. Yeah. So you know he stayed busy, um, and he you know he still had the brain. He kept the brain in a beer cooler or like a <laughs> yeah a cider box beer cooler. But yeah, so he wherever he went, he took the brain with him. And um, when uh, when asked if, if something appropriate came up, he would try to cut off a little piece or send a, a chunk. Um, to what he thought deemed as a, a potentially productive research a researcher, and he did that. But at the end of the day, at the end of the day, there was a grand total of nine articles written on Einstein's brain. Of those of which Harvey actually had something to do with, maybe five. Um, it's one of those things where you go, "Wow, this is Einstein's brain. There must be something scientifically valid here." But a lot of smart people confronted that and said, "Well." I'm not so sure. And I interviewed a number of these people who did the, the microscopic studies, and I said, would you do it again? And one guy who's a really good scientist said, no, I don't think I'd do it again. He says, there's a, if you're interested in intellect, there's better ways of doing it as far as I'm concerned. So it's, it's, it's interesting.